Greetings. Hello there. It is Tanya Poole and I am here to do the official reading of the year. Well, my official reading of the year is a lot of people doing, you know, different readings of the year um, for 2020. And so I'm just um, adding my own insight to it. If you follow me, you know that I've been talking about uh, the this particular reading of the year coming up. And I did one last year in January, January 2019. And a lot of what I said in that reading, we actually saw happen uh, as 2019 progressed. So now that we're in 2020, um, I decided to do the reading of another reading of the year. So, um, but this time I have some people in the room with me. So if I have the camera to the side, so I'm actually not going to be looking at the camera the entire time. You might see me looking over here. You might see me looking at you and then I have my notes in front of me so that, um, you know, so if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing as well. So for those of you um, who are just following me, just discovered me, my name is Tanya Poole and I'm an author, a teacher, an astrologer, uh, an intuitive person, and I do a lot, um, a lot of work. And so... Um, Let's see what else I want to say. Oh, those of you who <laughs> purchase tickets to this, who aren't just, just only watching live, but those who uh, purchase tickets to this, um, you know that your ticket included a one card energy reading. And so I will be doing those this week and emailing those out to you this week. So, um, you know, stay tuned for that. Um, hopefully I'll have them all out to you by Thursday. So whatever that date is, the 8th, I think. So, um, you know, just stay tuned for that. Um, let's see. So in this particular, in this reading of the year, we're going to, I'm going to cover a, quite a few different things, but I'm going to try to get it all done um, within an hour. So uh, 2020 is a very, very interesting year and um, very, very interesting year. So we're going to get into it, but uh, you can expect in this video, I'm going to talk about the history of real quickly about annual readings, readings of the year. Um, uh, I'm going to give the overall theme that came to me for 2020, like what is the overall overarching message, overarching message or theme of 2020. Um, the astrology of 2020, because we got a lot happening in the stars this year, <laughs> this year is going to be kind of a lot. As usual, we have three Mercury retrogrades, but Venus is also going retrograde as well as Mars. And so I will talk about all of that. And oh yeah, I will pull a few cards to give further clarity in my personal insights. And I will be taking questions from you and the audience that is in front of me. Um, and so I just want to tell you all who are in the building that um, after, I mean, you can feel free to talk and look alive. Um, and, uh, <laughs> uh, feel free to talk, laugh, you know, this, you don't have to be super silent or anything like that, ask questions. But after I do each segment, I will open it up specifically for questions for that segment. So like our first one, I'm going to talk about the history of annual readings and stuff. And so if you have a question about that, you know, chime in or whatever. So, um, so also before I get started, I have a very few quick announcements. Um, the first one is I want to thank Indigo's Cultural Arts Centers and Mama Nia. Hey, if you're watching live and hey, if you're watching the replay, um, because we are actually in her office space. And so um, I want to give a shout out to Indigo's Cultural Arts Centers, um, who I actually partner with on a lot of work. We are doing a rites of passage program for young people, um, for young adults um, coming up very, very soon. And I, I'm going to share the application for that Rice of Passage program. And so shout out to um, Indigo's Cultural Arts Centers. You can learn more about them at indigoscac.org. Um, thanks for the people who are watching live. Thanks to the people who are in the room. Um, Resolution Power is coming. You know, every January, people create New Year's resolutions, even though a lot of people this year kind of like, I ain't create no New Year's resolution, but whatever. Um, but Resolution Power is my master class to teach you how to create real resolutions that actually manifest. So if you want to get on the wait list for Resolution Power, because that master class will open up probably in like seven to 10 days, 
um, click the link that's attached to this live and um, get on the wait list for resolution power. Let's see what else. Oh, I finally filmed Everybody's a Capricorn, including you. We are officially in Capricorn season. And so um, no matter what your sun sign is, you can be a Virgo, you can be a Leo, you can be a Gemini. I don't really care what sign you are. We are in Capricorn season. So we are all learning the lessons of Capricorn. And so if you want to know more about that, my video, Everybody's a Capricorn, including you, is now available. You can click the link that's attached to this video and it will take you to that YouTube video that's up right now. This week's pick a card reading. I just posted the little one minute intro um, for you to pick your cards for this week. So if you want um, insight on what this week, January 5th through the 11th looks like for you, the pick a card is available. And in the results video for the pick a, pick a card reading, I announced our December 29th winner giveaway winner so i'm excited about that because it might be you so you want to make sure you watch um let's see what else oh i did say i'm an author so get my book the magic of self-love you can get everything i'm telling you right now that link that is on this video you can click there and it takes you to everything you need but my book the magic of self-love this year we are really using self-love as a magical tool to transform our lives. So get the magic of self-love. Let's see what else. Oh, also all of my readings, the magic of me intuitive natal chart reading, the mini edition of the magic of me, where I look at your sun, moon, and rising sign, um, your own personal 2020 year ahead reading, and the one card energy reading. All of that is, you know, I already told you I do 50 billion times. Click the link. Click the link for everything. Um, let's see what else. That is it. Oh, my disclaimer. Um, my readings are not meant to be predictive. You are the one who determines your own destiny, your own, um, however your life shapes, you know, this astrology, the stars, all of that kind of stuff. There's signs, you know, just like a stop sign on the street. You can decide whether you actually want to stop or not. You can keep going and barrel right through that stop sign and get hit by a car. No, I'm just saying, don't get hit by a car. But I'm just saying, you know, sometimes we hold the signs as like set in stone, but you would, you know, somebody had to put that sign there. Like you, you create your own life. You shape your own destiny and the signs really just help you to do that. And I just help you to do that. I don't tell you what you should or shouldn't do. Um, I'm just giving you a general outlook uh, for the year, or if you book a personal reading, I'm giving you a general outlook for, you know, your own personal life. All right. So that is it for all of my announcements. Again, click the link that's attached to, um, this live video for everything that I just said. All right. So this is a huge plant and you probably can't see it all in this video, <laughs> but, um, I have this plant here because I'm actually going to pour libation. So for those of you who um, are not familiar, libation is something that is poured um, usually, not usually, but sometimes it's water, sometimes it's alcohol, it's, you know, um, like rum or gin or something like that. But um, since I'm pouring it into a plant, it will definitely be water. Um, but libation is poured um, for several reasons. One, before me personally, before I do any type of spiritual work, I like to acknowledge spirit <laughs> and I like to acknowledge my own ancestors. So when you pour libation, you are, you are literally pouring, you're, you're literally acknowledging your, your ancestors, um, the ones that perhaps you knew. Um, and then, but definitely even the ones that way far back that you can't even remember. Um, you, all of us have, you know, um, people who we didn't come into this world by ourselves. You know, it was through creation, people created our parents and then people, other people created our grandparents and so on down the line. And so all of the people who are our predecessors, uh, we are the product of that. Now, I know sometimes we didn't always like all of our predecessors. You might not have liked your grandma, or your great grandfather, whoever. Um, but at the same time, um, we have what I call ascended ancestors or righteous ancestors, those who always had the family's best interest at heart, those who, um, you know, when you even think about all of this DNA stuff that's going on right now, like 
23 and me and ancestry and how just from your own blood somebody can tell you everybody from generations past from all the way back to where you came from so we are a living example a living breathing functional here right now in the flesh of our ancestors and we are the ones when you're living you are the one in the driver's seat for your family so you are also the one who is shaping the destiny of those who will come long after you are gone all right so um i'm going to pour libation why am i feeling emotional all of a sudden like i guess i'm about to call my family hey can somebody give me some tissue or something because i already see between the pour spilling of this water and the spilling of this water no i don't know i may or may not cry i don't know um my daughter is stepping out right now to get some tissue or just a paper towel or something um as we get ready to pour libation but again libation is something um and also i didn't say this too but libation helps to open the way it reminds you that yeah you might have spiritual gifts and whatnot you might have thank you um you know all of this stuff going on but you want as you're doing any spiritual work this could be doing readings this could be your prayer and meditation time you want those who are with you and for you to be with you and for you um as you're doing the work okay so got my plant right here so since i'm the one that's doing the reading um i'm going to pour libation for my own ancestors um so for oh and if you're watching whether live or somewhere else after i pour you can say ashe ashe just means you know and so it is um but it's also like your life is it's energy is life force energy so you're giving life to um to the words that i'm saying so first and foremost i want to give thanks and gratitude, show thanks, gratitude, and appreciation for my own righteous and ascended ancestors, for the Most High, for uh, giving me my own spiritual gifts, helping me to consistently walk in my purpose, even when I make mistakes and don't do everything exactly right. They give me wisdom and guidance to get back on track and do the things that I need to do. So in this moment, I honor and I recognize them and I honor and recognize how they show up in my own life. And so to, oh my God, I really am about to cry. This is for real. Okay, guys, you done brought your friend. I'm in here. Okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> so to um, Granddaddy T, uh, Baden Thompson Sr., I say, Ashe. I want to hear y'all through the camera. I'm pretending like I can hear y'all, but thank y'all. Um, to Cornelia Thompson, I say Ashe. Ashe. To Grandma Massey, I say Ashe. Ashe. To Grandpa Samuel, I say Ashe. Ashe. To um, Granny Massey, I say Ashe. Ashe. To Grandpa, Granddaddy Jack, I say Ashe. Ashe. Uh, Uncle Paul, Ashe. To um, oh my gosh, Whoa. I can't believe I'm doing this. Whatever, um, Aunt Phyllis, I say Ashe. To Aunt Paula, I say Ashe. To um, Emma Mae Johnson, Ashe. To uh, Pastor, excuse me, to, yeah, he was a pastor. To Grandpa, Reverend Pastor <laughs> Austin, I say Ashe. Ashe. To, um, all the way back to the oldest ancestor that I just discovered, um, who was enslaved, actually, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I think she was born in 1830. Oh, my God, really, for real, crying on this thing. I'm going to be laughing at myself later, but right now. <laughs> but um, to, uh, oh, there's something living in this plant that's crawling. <laughs> um, to <laughs> to uh, my oldest ancestor that I am consciously aware of, uh, Susan Wa, I say Ashe. Ashe. And to all of my righteous and ascended ancestors and to those represented in this room whose names we know and whose names we don't know, we say Ashe. 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 Woo! I guess the way is open. 
<laughs> if y'all need to go get some more tissue, feel free. Because these are dirty. <laughs> All right, y'all. Wow. Okay, so we really for real in this thing right now. Okay. So I'm going to continue on uh, while someone is getting some more tissue. Um, so the history of uh, readings of the year are very, very important. Shout out to all of my uh, brothers and sisters throughout the world who are doing readings of the year. Um, because the, the annual reading, first of all, there are a lot of customs that take, I told y'all I'm gonna be looking over here and at the camera. Um, there are a lot of customs that take place throughout the year when entering into the new year. You know, we got the, um, the black eyed peas and collard greens, you know, we got the, the first person to enter into the, to the house has to have money on them or, um, or sometimes it's, um, the a man or a, a boy the masculine energy must enter in first because it's the, it's like saying that that person is clearing the way and making it safe for the family um there's a lot of customs and traditions that take place around the new year um but also um a lot of oh before i get into that the reason why the new year is very very important even to quote unquote, black people, African American people, and just black people uh, in the Caribbean and, and globally is, um, you know, the new year was, and it's interesting because the, I believe it was the New York Times, thank you, the New York Times recently did a, um, y'all can take one, um, did an article on this, I think it was the Times, uh, but anyway, did an article on how at the new year, the new year was very stressful for a lot of African Americans or enslaved black people because it was on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day when the so-called slave owner, slave master would decide whether or not he was going to keep the slaves, certain slaves on the plantation. And so while it might have been a celebratory time for a lot of people, for them, it was a sad time because you didn't know if your, your brother, your sister, your mother, your, your child, your father, whoever would be sold away or hired out. Um, it was actually called hiring day, which I didn't know that that's what they called it, but hiring day because they might be hired out or sold out to another plantation and you may or may not see your family again. So it was a scary time, but at, at the same time celebratory because if, if that didn't happen to your family, then you know that you, you know, that was another day that you got to be with your family. Um, um, New Year's day, uh, New Year's Eve or New Year's day was also the day in which, um, Abraham Lincoln was said to have signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Didn't go into effect until like later on that year, 1863, but that was when he set it in, uh, wrote it down that, um, you know, that the slaves would be set free. And so that was a time of celebration for black people. And New Year's Day was all, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day were also times when um, many uh, revolutions and things like that throughout the world would occur. And so um, though January 1st, you know, you'll hear a lot that it's not technically the new year because, you know, a new year begins in spring when new life is happening. Um, and because of the way our calendar is set up, I believe it might have been the Romans or the Greeks or somebody who did it this way. <laughs> but uh, when they decided that January 1st should be the new year, it's still an important day. So even though even now it's January 5th, so we're a little late, but we still, you know, it's never too late <laughs> to get it in. Um, but so... Um, readings of the year a lot of times would take place because... We wanted to know what the new year held for us. We wanted to know if our families would still be together. We wanted to know, you know, um, would prosperity come? You know, um, what does, you know, the year look like? And so all, cu all cultures throughout the world um, have their own version of divination or oracles or whatever that they use to, to look at the upcoming year. And even those of us who celebrated Kwanzaa um, from December 26th through January 1st, we know that the final, the last principle of Kwanzaa is Imani, which means faith. And so it's about having faith, obviously, in your ancestors, your leaders, yourself, um, and then faith that the, that the new year will bring, um, that good things can happen in the upcoming year. So that is my brief history on 
readings of the year and why January 1st is important. Does my studio audience have any questions at this time? Anything you want to share? Comments, questions, thoughts? No? Okay. Yes? Yeah, I did have one. So when yeah. do they, when would the new year, when would the new year be technically? So before this current calendar that we follow, that we've been following for centuries now, um, usually the new year happens on the spring equinox, the first day of spring, which usually happens like March 21st, 22nd, somewhere around there, the start of Aries season. Shout out to all my Aries sun signs out there um, because it marks the beginning of spring new life. So that should be the start. And then you go into summer and then fall happens where autumn fall where things, you know, the season, the year is coming, falling, you know what I mean? And then winter, everything goes into, um, you know, into a dormant state, but you're preparing for spring right now. So yes, technically the new year is when new life would usually happens, which would be spring. But we do, um, because of the way our calendar is set up now, um, and because of the history, so much history of January 1st now, it really, we, we treat it like it's, it's a new year. Mm -hmm. yep. Any other questions? All right, so I'm moving on. So the, um, did you have a question? Okay, well. That's really messed up, y'all. I'm not even going to tell y'all what's happening off this camera, right? I'm not even going to say it. I got one little snack on the side and somebody wants it. Yes, you can have it. <laughs> Did you, why didn't you eat before you came? Love and light. Um, anyway. <laughs> so um, the overall theme for 2020, as I, I you know, was doing my own prayer meditation about this this year, 2020, and what I have written down here uh, is tearing down and building structures and uh, raising our standards. 2020, I mean, I know people are always like, oh, new year, new me, new, you know, great and wonderful. If you already been watching the news, you already know. This year already is setting off with a theme of destruction in some ways. Tearing down, tearing down structures, but in order to build structures. Um, so it's very important for us to, to realize that. Now, I don't feel like this whole year will be destructive in any kind of way, but I'm saying that this is the idea of destroying and dismantling what is already established. Now, this could be globally. If you're watching the news, this could be globally, but this is also in your own personal life. Bringing down or tearing down old structures, outdated structures, things that no longer um, are beneficial in order to build new. You can't build new with the old. And so with us entering this year, as we enter every year begins in Capricorn season and Capricorn season is very much about creating structures in order and discipline. And mm, it's not always the easiest <laughs> sign because it requires responsibility it requires that you become a leader even when you don't want to be sometimes um just because that's the only way that you're going to find order in the midst of chaos whether that's global chaos or in your family chaos or within yourself chaos it's about finding order and structure within chaos um if you go back and look at my 2019 reading of the year which is still up at January of 2019, I said, oh, 2019, even though it's Capricorn season, it felt like Aquarius. And if you know anything about Aquarius energy, it's kind of, you can't tie it down. It's all over the place. It's whatever it's going to be. You can't control Aquarius energy. It's, and I think I even said it felt bipolar-like. And if y'all go back and look at your 2019, it was probably crazy. Almost everybody I know was like, people died, uh, stuff happened, they couldn't control everything going on in their lives, they were happy, they couldn't figure it out. 2019 felt weird, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was just weird, it was awkward, it was out of place, it's like you couldn't even figure it out. Now, 
2020 though is piggybacking on that but it's it really does have more of that capricorn feeling where it's like where we might even be asking ourselves who is really in charge like who is really running this thing where this glo again globally or within yourself who is really really in charge um the rites of passage program that i mentioned at the opening of this um that uh, i'm doing in collaboration with um uh, mama nia of indigo's cultural art centers uh, we have this um what do you call it a uh what do you call it um not affirmation uh what do you call it pledge um pledge. yeah i didn't hear you you got to Okay. No, I didn't say it, but that's the word I was saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> pledge. And it opens, it says, I am the master of myself. You want to say this first opening with me? No. Yeah. Okay. Ready and go. I'm, I'm the, the master, master of myself. myself. I control what I say, what I think, and what I do. No external forces are responsible for my behavior. That's it. All right. So I'm going to say it again. I am the master of myself. I control what I say and what I think and what I do. No external forces are responsible for my behavior. That could sum up all of 2020. Be the leader of yourself. I am responsible for myself. I control what I say, what I think, and what I do. No external forces, meaning my boss, my job, the president, whoever, is responsible for my behavior. 2020 is all about you becoming the leader that you know that you can be. Um, and 2020, the way it's setting up astrologically, you will either be rewarded or suffer the consequences for not becoming the leader that you know that you're supposed to be. There are four, there are three, uh, three words or three concepts and i actually share this in my video everybody's a capricorn including you that really came um to mind as i was thinking about this year and it's discipline structure and following the rules discipline is so important whatever it is i don't care if you say i for real this is my year to lose this 10 pounds you are not going to get there outside of discipline, like for real, for real. And not only will you not get there outside of discipline, because we all know you got to do the work, right? We all know you got to do the work to have whatever outcome that you want. But um, 2020 is not going to let you get by without doing the work. So by December 2020, you will see who actually put in the work. You will not just, you know how sometimes it's like, um, I'm, I'm going to do this homework assignment so I can pass this class. But then you're like, oh, I didn't, I, am, I ain't do the homework assignment, but I think I can still skate by and pass this class. And then when you fail the class, it's like, oh, I don't understand why I failed. And the teacher's like, no, I understand why you failed because you didn't do the work. I'm sorry, why did you think you were gonna pass without doing the work? Why did you think you were gonna lose that weight without doing, like you will actually, it, you will be penalized for not doing the work. Whereas last year, you might have been able to skate by for not doing whatever the work was for the outcomes that you say you wanted and still been okay. But this year, it really is about creating structure, discipline, and order in your life to have the outcome that you say that you want and suffering the consequences for not doing it. 2020, if we look at it even numero numerologi numerologically, is that how you say? Numerology. Okay, that's a lot. Um, the two and two equal four. Four is balance. Four is an Egyptian cosmology is the god. Cosmology is the uh, Netter or goddess Maat. Balance. Justice. This year is all about finding balance. Being just to yourself. Being just to other people. Being right and exact as, as much as you can. So, and again, like I said, and also following the rules. So for example, if you're at a restaurant this year and you pay your tab and they give you back too much in change and you're like, oh, I'm just going to, she gave me back $2 extra. I'm just going to keep that. You can keep it if you want to. But 2020 is also about justice and karma. So then you're going to reap the benefit or the consequence for not acting justly and not acting in line with karma. Whereas before... You might would have gotten away with that and been whatever, whatever. No, this year is all about following the rules and following structure 
Now, I'm not saying that you got to follow rules that are really unfair. Because again, this year is about my odd balance and justice. So if it's unfair, I'm not as saying that you should do anything that is unfair and unjust. But when you know in the core of your being that there's a right way and a wrong way and you choose the wrong way, there might not really be any getting away with choosing the wrong way this year. All right. So, um, and I'm getting into, when I get into the, the more astrology piece, I'll further explain that. But, um, I have written here in my notes that, um, let's see <sighs> that, uh, we enter into 2020 in the sign of Capricorn, which is an earth sign very much all about, again, Capricorn, watch that video. It writes a Capricorn, including you all about structure, discipline, order, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but Capricorn is also the sign of achieving your long-term goals, achieving your long-term success. Like it's not just discipline and order and structure just to be harsh and mean and make your life a living hell. It is really to structure you so that you can prosper. So what I wrote down in my notes is, um, I wrote down earth and water. So Capricorn is like earth, it's very uh, stable, it creates boundaries. And I wrote down water because I was thinking about the flow that we all want to experience in life. You know, like the flow of joy, the flow of money, the flow of health and of prosperity, all that kind of flow sort of stuff. So earth, if you look at a river, the earth that is around the river is what creates the structure so that the river can flow. So it doesn't go all over the place. So structure is important. Discipline is important because it helps you to set structure and boundaries, good boundaries in your life so that what you want can flow to and from you constantly. If you don't see Capricorn, and if you know any sun sign Capricorns, they are usually about their money. They don't, if you know a Capricorn and if you owe a Capricorn money, you best believe you're going to pay it. You know what I'm saying? If you owe, if you know a Capricorn or they will do it, or they are they don't let go of their money easily like they all they gotta stay like if you're not a capricorn and you look at a capricorn's bank account you be like oh they got money but to them they're like ah, that ain't nothing because they're they're thinking about long term they're saving you know so they're creating those boundaries um to save to so that they can have prosperity so they can have you know what they need Right. And so likewise, you know, this year overall, I think this year for everybody, we are going, we are challenged to create boundaries, to create structures, to create whatever it is. I don't care if you got to create, um, for example, if you, if you don't have a bank account, um, or you don't have a way so that your money can start making money and coming back to you, this might be a good year to do that because you need to, that's a structure you need to create so that prosperity can flow to you. If you need to set up something where every month your account is automatically drafted $25 or $20 or whatever, put aside into a savings or IRA or something like that, or, you know, whatever, some sort of investment, that's a structure that requires discipline that feels like a pain in the ass when it's happening because you want your $25. But the long-term reward for that is then you have a chunk of change set aside or you got this investment that's now making money for you that's what capricorn energy is all about it's structure and discipline and restriction but doing so is what creates the goals that you want you know for my young people you know what i mean it's like even school or anything that you are responsible for this is the year where you you really got to like whatever's required of you to actually do it. You might not see the result that you want immediately. So you got to this might be the year we all have to constantly remind ourselves, I'm doing it. There's a reward for this coming. There's a reward for this coming. Okay, okay, okay. You know what I mean? Because the reward will come later for doing the work now. For being disciplined and creating order in your life now. The reward will come later. So, you know, a lot of times in, when there's a new year, everybody's all excited and like, oh, big things are happening. Big things will happen. This will be a game changer year for a lot of people. Like you'll see, I believe we'll see a major come up for a lot of people this year, but it's going to be people who were silently doing the work, silently saving their money, silently making sure they did all their homework assignments, silently, you know, working on their business plan. So, you know, who, because Capricorn energy, 
is really about doing the work that nobody sees so that you can be seen later. It's about that long-term success that comes um, later on. And so, you know, be the, what I write here, be the master and the leader of creating healthy boundaries, which allow prosperity to flow again. So, you know, healthy boundaries also, I think in terms of relationships, you know, if you got relationships in your life, this could be love relationships. These could be friendships. These could be family relationships. Um, creating healthy relationships with those people and creating healthy boundaries, knowing when to say no, knowing when to say, no, I can't go out tonight because I got work to do. Knowing when to say, no, I can't spend this money right now because I'm saving it. You know, I'm not saying that we should just live, you know, can't do nothing. I'm just saying that, you know, this is a year to say, make to make sure you're saying no to the right stuff so that you can allow the yes to the right stuff to flow to you. Say no to the wrong stuff so that your yes to the right stuff can come to you, you know, so that's what this year um, is really looking like. Um, we we may see a lot of destruction this year, um, destruction of of things that we held very tightly to. If you go back and watch my read, um, everybody's a Capricorn, including you video. I did an oracle reading in that, and two cards came out: the the tower, which is total destruction, and then a change in the wind, which is like changes happening that you ain't asked for like change like just when you got comfortable psh, the wind blew and changed everything so this year we may see we may look around us and see um may see destruction happen may see old structures fall, falling again this could be in the world around us this could be in your personal life you know your comfort zone not being your comfort zone anymore um, just things that you, that you thought you could hold firmly, firm, tightly to, and just know that this is how it always is. And then it changes, you know? Um, but the purpose of destroying old structures and the, um, old establishments collapsing is so that new ones can be built. That's why this year you have to step into your leadership position because you don't want to be ass out. When stuff starts falling, you, you want to make sure you got money set aside. You want to make sure you know where your food is coming from. You want to make sure that you're not just wishy-washy based on everything that you see happening on the news because you're a leader. I'm the master of myself. I control what I say and what I think and what I do. No external forces are responsible for my behavior. So you want to be in a position where you're not moved even so much just because of even if other people get in a frenzy about things that they see, you don't get in a frenzy about it. You be the leader of your own emotions, your own mind, your own thoughts, your own words, all of that kind of stuff. That's where the rewards come from. So again, this year, we're tearing down old structures and building new ones. And we are literally seeing that happen if you turn on the news right now. So that is um, the end of this segment, the overall thing. Do I have any questions for any thoughts, concerns, anything that came to your mind for those who are in the room? I have a question. Yes. Um, it's quite interesting um, that this is the theme for the overall year because this was highly talked about, not just in, you know, everyone's a Capricorn, but kind of like in your readings, maybe a week or two before that, letting mm. go of old things that didn't work for you. Wow. Um, letting new opportunities in, like uh, when I was looking at the pick a card from week, December 29th to January 4th, wow. mm -hmm. um, I had gotten the, I think it's group one with the fire quartz and the candy cane, and it oh, was yeah. like, you know, it's fire and ice. So like right now you have to embrace that burning energy in mm -hmm. you, but also know when to be relaxed, know when to be calm. And, mm -hmm. um, the wisdom card was regeneration. Let new opportunities oh, yeah. I forgot about that. And yeah. then that kind of, like I said, piggybacks in the Capricorn. And then this is just mm -hmm. that theme for the year. So it just seems like there is going to be a lot of chaos, but as long as you are in a right state of mind, mm -hmm. you know how to calm yourself, you know what brings you joy, mm -hmm. and you know what you need to do and what you don't need to do, mm -hmm. 
you'll find blessings will come to you. Yeah, and really that's the whole point of Capricorn energy. And I keep saying Capricorn because, and let me, I'm about to go into the astrology segment, but um, because the planet Saturn, which rules Capricorn, will be in the planet, will, excuse me, will be in the sign of Capricorn for all of 20, 20 all the way to the very end to like December. So we all gonna be feeling that uh, Saturn and Jupiter and Capricorn I'm about to explain that in a second, but, um, you're absolutely right. Um, th the energy of Capricorn itself, yes, is very disciplinary and it's about the long term. not, it's about delayed gratification so that you can experience the long term outcome that you want. And so because we're dealing with all of that, um, even if we see chaos or chaotic things happening around us or in the world or in our personal lives, it's when, when you know the outcome, you, you can be unfazed by that. You can be unmoved by you know any chaos that you see because Capricorn always seeks to bring order to chaos. So you're not moved by the insanity or the craziness because you're constantly pulling that back into chaos. You're constantly disciplining your mind. You're constantly disciplining your money. You're constantly disciplining, creating goals with, you know, when you have a goal, I don't know why I'm even thinking about like, if, if you're baking, you bake cakes, right? So, you know, there's a point in the process where the cake looks nothing like what it would look like at the end. But if you don't know what the end result should be in the middle of that, you'd be like, I don't know what the hell. This ain't turning out right. <laughs> this is this. It looks ugly. It's not even. It don't even look like it's gonna be good because it has to go through the entire process and be in the oven for however long and bake and you know what I mean and get right. And then you you can't just slice straight into it. You gotta let it cool enough so it can be solid enough, structured enough so you can slice the cake and it won't fall apart and crumble and everything. You gotta follow the recipe. That's what Capricorn's energy is telling us all this year. You know, follow the recipe, whatever it is, whatever it is, follow the recipe for your money, follow the recipe for your business, follow the recipe for your family, follow the recipe for your school, follow the, follow the formula. Capricorn likes formula, strategy, the blueprint, whatever it is, stick to it. And halfway through, don't be upset because it doesn't look like the outcome yet. It's not supposed to look like the out outcome. Capricorn, Saturn is in Capricorn all this year. And Saturn is the, like I said, is the planet that rules the sign of Capricorn. And wherever Saturn is, oh, oh. Wherever Saturn is presently, which we know is in the sign of Capricorn, and wherever it is in your birth chart, that's why I said in the beginning, make sure you book a natal chart reading with me. Wherever it is in your birth chart is the area of your life where you will have the most delays and setbacks and start and stop and start and stop because it's about whipping you into shape so that you are ready for the outcome. Saturn and Capricorn or Saturn in Capricorn does not reward you just because you showed up. No pain, no gain is what Saturn and Capricorn is. So you got to follow the rules. You got to and you can't, uh, we can't uh, have delayed, uh, we can't, uh, what do you call it, succumb to delayed gratification. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have fun this year or experience joy. We should. Um, but you know, it's all about, uh, understanding that the real things, the real outcomes that we're desiring come later and we can't get caught up in the chaos and the foolishness in the world around us. It's about staying on task and saying, staying focused. So, um, the reason why I'm talking so much about discipline, structure, and order is because in 2020, like I said, the planet Saturn, excuse me, right now, presently, we have one, two, three, four, five, five planets in the sign of Capricorn. Obviously the sun, because we're in sun, we're in Capricorn season. So happy birthday to all of my Capricorns out there. It's your birthday season. So the sun is in Capricorn. The planet Mercury that governs how we speak, talk, think, all of that kind of stuff, our logic is in Capricorn. Jupiter, the planet of blessings and expansion, is in restrictive sign Capricorn. And Saturn is in Capricorn. And Pluto, the planet of destruction, is in Capricorn. 
Okay, so Jupiter, let me talk about Jupiter for a quick second. Jupiter will be in the sign of Capricorn the entire year until December 19th. Jupiter is the planet of blessings, expansion. Jupiter is the opposite of Saturn. Like Jupiter is like, Jupiter is like that parent that just gives you everything. Like, oh, I'm going to buy you whatever you want. I'm going to give you however much money you want. You can eat whatever you want. You can have whatever you want whatever even your bad behavior jupiter will expand that's why that's the only downside of jupiter like if you let's just say you know <laughs> even if you got a drug habit right jupiter will expand it. it's like let's do more drugs let's have more fun you know what i mean so it, it it like expands everything but with it being in the sign of capricorn which is a very restrictive sign um jupiter and capricorn is is all about really blessing you for following the rules and doing the work. So that's even more of an incentive to do things the right way, the best that you can, because the rewards for that will be exponential. So let's just say, let's just say you're trying to, you know, by December, by the end of the year, you want to have saved $10,000. And you're like, all I got is $25 a week to put aside. Jupiter and Capricorn will see that you're put, do, being diligent to put inside that $25 a week. And then other blessings will come, like checks in the mail, like, st like somebody will give you money, you know, just because you're being obedient and being consistent so that it multiplies. Again, because Jupiter likes to expand and multiply whatever you're doing. So since it, it, it's all, now we're in a time when it's all about following the rules, the more you follow the rules, the more you can be blessed and be expanded in for doing so but saturn is right there with jupiter and saturn is the planet that rules capricorn saturn is about discipline and order so saturn's gonna keep checking you all of us and be like no for real like we might even find where we're having to do things over and over again that we thought we already did because it's it's about whipping us into shape you know it's about cr creating leaders it's about and i'm really feeling this strongly some of us have to get in position to be the ancestors at some point who our descendants, if you saw me earlier, I was pouring libation, who our descendants, descendants will pour libation to. So meaning um, you want to be that person who actually does leave a big inheritance for your family, for those who come after you. So you have to become that person. You know, if, if you go back and you read about some people like I was reading recently about some people like straight out of slavery, like was the time when we had more black people who own land then than now. That took a lot of work to be like massive landowners in the 1800s and early 1900s. Like we had more people who owned acres and acres and acres of land and all of these like HBCUs that we see um, all, all throughout the South, even though, the, yeah, they got a lot of their money from, they did know how to negotiate to get resources from wealthy white people as well. But if you ever just drive past any of these universities, North Carolina a and State University, Aggie Pride. Um, okay, so Winston-Salem State, Bethune-Cookman, FAMU, Tuskegee, Hampton, all of these, if you ever just look at these institutions, these were built by people who had way less access than any of us have right now. There was no Google internet on how to do this. There was no blueprint. Most of their parents and some of them themselves were slaves. So just think on that for a minute. I mean, it really puts you to shame. It make you, it make me look at my own life and be like, really, I ain't done nothing compared to them. So but right now it's time for us to think like those people and say, wow, what do I want the people a hundred years after me? Again, delayed gratification. Remember I said that delayed gratification. What do I want them to benefit from what I'm doing now? You know, what do I want my children, my grandchildren, great grandchildren? What type of inheritance do I want them to have? So that's why Saturn will continue to teach us these lessons because it's creating leaders. We are being challenged to rise up, stop being lazy asses, and do what we got to do to get on point. That is one of the lessons for this year. And that's why we can't be bothered by what's happening in the world around us so much 
I mean, we have to be aware, but we always have to keep our eye on the prize, on the long-term goal. And so Saturn will be in, in the sign of Capricorn until December 17th. So these, this, we're going to be feeling this all year, all year, all year, all year. Um, we have a few eclipses. We just had one. We had a lunar eclipse, whatever day that was, the end of December somewhere. Um, but anyway, um, and then January 10th, next week, we'll have a, wait a minute, a solar eclipse? We just had a lunar eclipse, whatever. Okay, we'll have a full moon on January 10th in the sign of Cancer. Shout out to all my Cancers out there. There is a Cancer in the room. She's being quiet. Um, anyway, uh, because Capricorn is the opposite sign of Cancer. So Cancer is more emotional, feeling, and represents the home. And Capricorn represents life outside the home, long-term goals, and all that kind of stuff. So you got to have your emotions right to get your money right. Anyway, um, so we'll have a full moon on January 10th in the sign of Cancer. Um, all right, so I'm not going through all the full moons. You can actually Google that. But in June, June 5th, we'll have another lunar eclipse. Um, June 5th, June 21st. I'm trying to look at my own notes. June 21st, the summer solstice time um we'll have a solar eclipse in the sign of cancer so google those dates um mercury retrograde y'all everybody always be talking about mercury retrograde and they be so afraid and i get it because mercury retrograde really do be <clears throat> sometimes you know what i mean but we have three mercury retrogrades in 2020 um the first one is coming up next month get ready um, February 16th through March 9th. Now, I'm going to tell y'all this. I'm going to tell y'all in the room. Every time you hear about a Mercury retrograde, they always tell you the day it starts. Like what I just did. I said February 16th. Mercury starts its retrograde period at least two weeks before that. So you will be feeling the effects of Mercury retrograde two weeks before February 16th. And then it's retrograde from February 16th to March 9th. And then you'll feel it two weeks after. Mercury retrograde basically is when the planet Mercury appears to be moving backwards in the sky. And the planet Mercury is the planet that kind of rules our communication, how we think, talk, speak, travel. So it's during, du during that time when people sometimes have the most communication breakdowns, the planes get delayed, car accidents. You, you cannot rush during Mercury retrograde period. Slow down. That's the whole point. Mercury is the fastest moving planet in our solar system. So when it goes retrograde and starts moving backwards and slowing down, that's, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Slow down. So don't be in a rush. If you have somewhere to be at 3, make sure you're there at 2.30 because you don't want to rush and end up in car, unnecessary car accidents. You know, um, if you got, they say, you know, if you got big items you need to purchase, like big ticket items or contracts you have to sign or marriage or anything, you might want to just kind of ask yourself, is this really the time I want to do this? You know, Mercury retrograde just is a time period where it's self-reflective. So you should be reflecting on the decisions that you're making, the words that you're saying, because you could say some stuff and not mean it and have mm, long-term consequences for the words that you said. Um, um, you want to be mindful of your travel. Something else I was getting ready to say that was important. Now I can't even remember. But February 16th through March 9th, again, two weeks before, two weeks after. And Mercury is going retrograde in the sign of Pisces, but it goes retrograde so far back, it actually enters into Aquarius again for a minute and then goes back into Pisces. So, yeah, so, yeah, so that Mercury retrograde period might be um, a time... <laughs> Yeah, time we're re really trying to make certain advancements or we might even have miscommunication with our community and our friends, our circle of friends and things like that. So we want to be mindful um, during that time. The second Mercury retrograde occurs June 18th through July 12th in the sign of Cancer. It's all in the sign of Cancer that time. And again, you want to look two weeks before that and two weeks after that. 
Um, so that is a time where we may, um, <laughs> we may want to go into our shell, like the sign of cancer is a crab. So we might want to go into our hard shell and, uh, and really, oh, I know what I was going to say. It was really important. Mercury retrograde is also the time when like, oh, boyfriends, girlfriends, like don't, oh, people that you thought you were done with all of a sudden resurface or old friends even. You're like, wait a minute talk to you and have a long and here you go come popping back up in my life because mercury retrograde is encouraging you to reflect on when you said that relationship was over were you sure <laughs> are you sure and again remember our overall theme and building structures and discipline and order so if you released a relationship because it was the right choice to make and that person resurfaces remember your right choice Remember your right choice. I'm not saying that certain relationships can't be healed or fixed or anything like that. Um, but then, but again, with us being in all of this Capricorn energy this year, then that means if you're going to rebuild that relationship, it has to be built on solid ground, on real, for realness and not just emotions. It's got to be shown up for real. It can't just be fluff and just how you feel in the moment. Because if you make moves just on how you feel in the moment, especially in a Mercury retrograde time, you will suffer the consequences. You will suffer the consequences, but you will also reap the rewards by making the right choices. All right, so this is a very karmic year. All right, so you wanna make the right choices. But um, so yeah, be mindful of that. So um, the second Mercury retrograde, June 18th through July 12th in the sign of cancer. So that will definitely deal with matters of the home, emotions, your feelings, um, and all of that sort of thing. Um, and again, two weeks before and two weeks after. Then the final Mercury retrograde of 2020 occurs October 13th through November 3rd. And again, you want to look two weeks before October 13th and two weeks after November 3rd because, hi, how are you? Because that is the, um, the t that's the full Mercury retrograde, not just the dates I gave you, but the two weeks before and the two weeks after. And the final Mercury retrograde will take place in the sign of Scorpio and Libra. It will start off in Scorpio, which, oh, if y'all remember this Mercury retrograde that we just came out of, around like Halloween and into November or whatever of 2019. And that was a rough one for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. That is what this one, because it's happening again in the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is a deep sign. Scorpio is one of the deepest, darkest signs of all 12 signs. And what I mean by that, Scorpio, whether you're a Scorpio person, sun sign, or wherever it is in your birth chart, you should know where it is in your birth chart because <clears throat> wherever Scorpio is, is where your deepest, darkest secrets are, your deepest feelings, even feelings you don't want to admit to like jealousy, envy, murder, death. I hate her. I want to kill this person. Like it's, 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 our lowest and our highest selves at the same time. It's, it's interesting because Scorpio itself is very, very spiritual, very intuitive. It's the most magical sign. It's the sign of the alchemist. It's, it's very transformative, but on its lower energy is very, can be very destructive. So Mercury is going retrograde um, at the end of, towards the end of the year um, in the sign of Scorpio. And it will back up into the sign of Libra, but then once it goes direct, it will go back through Scorpio again. So it'll be like, we'll be getting hit with it. Um, but again, what I tell y'all at the beginning of this, how you move through all of this is how you move. You are the master of yourself. You control what you say and what you think and what you do. No external, external forces are responsible for your behavior. So every Mercury, Mercury retrograde is designed to reveal who you are, to show who you are, to cause... Um, uh, oh, and with that last one being Scorpio and Libra, that really might be the time that an old lover comes back. Yes, yes, ma'am. I do uh, give readings. If you click the link in my uh, in the description box to this reading, um, you will see all of the readings that I currently have available. But right now, I, I am doing the my annual reading of the year for 2020. Um, so, um, so that one, that last Mercury retrograde, because it's Scorpio, Scorpio, again, because it deals with the deepest, 
uh, most intimate part of yourself. Scorp the sign of Scorpio is also one of those signs that's like pure passion and pure sexual energy too. And then Libra is the sign of partnerships and love, relationships and balance. So when you think about that, Mercury going ret retrograde during that time, that could be the time that somebody from your past, perhaps that you did have a love relationship with, coming back to you. It could also be a time because Scorpio deals with um, not making money, but how you dis how do you disseminate money? And even money, sometimes it has to go out through taxes or something like that. So that might also be a time like if you have been not paying something or owing money that boom, all of a sudden it comes to you that you owe this chunk of money or whatever, where something comes back to you financial wise that you need to address or deal with it. or it could be money that's owed to you coming back to you like finally somebody you dealt with could be a old partner or somebody who owes you money and it's like oh okay oh i realize it now you know i'll pay up you know so um but again mercury retrograde is really just a time for us to self-reflect and make sure we're making the right choices that's why a lot of times people get um messed up during mercury retrograde because they their choices come back to them and they make the wrong choice again and again and again it's really just to show you yourself that's all mercury retrograde um really should be doing and then um venus and mars go retrograde this year they don't go retrograde i think they both go retrograde like every maybe 12 to 18 months or something so venus goes retrograde may 13th through june 25th in the sign of gemini and when Venus goes retrograde, so Venus is the planet of beauty, attraction, love, romance, you know, all that kind of stuff. But so on the external level, um, it's often said that when Venus goes retrograde, don't make any drastic changes to your external. Like that might not be the best time to get a tattoo or to cut your hair or to, you know what I mean? Because it could have the opposite, like you might get a tattoo, for example, that you regret getting, <laughs> or you might, don't make any permanent changes to your external self. Really, that's the time to go in. Anytime a planet goes retrograde, it's the time to go inward. So Venus being the planet of beauty, love, and all that kind of stuff, this is the time, May 13th through the 25th, to go inward and reflect on maybe your inner beauty, your inner, what, you know, your inner uh, attractiveness, instead of doing stuff on the outside, do it on the inside um also with it going retrograde in the sign of of gemini um we might be kind of wishy-washy on uh who we want to be with love wise like if you're dealing with relationships you might find that might be a time you might be dealing with two people and you gotta you don't know which choice to make so um you know again there's so much more that could be said about that and i'm gonna talk about it more at that time but i just wanted to give you those dates that venus does go retrograde may 13th through june 25th mars the planet mars goes retrograde also this year mars is the planet of drive ambition action um force um is also impulsive uh, uh, uh represents our Im impulsive nature even anger um anytime our energy has to go out forcefully and so it goes retrograde um from september 9th through november 13th in the sign of aries and aries is mars's home sign it loves the sign of aries so then that will be the time where if let's just say somebody really angers you or ticks you off you want to be mindful of how you display that anger it also could be a time when people have been holding in their anger a long time and then boom they just explode and it's just like i, I don't like this i want to tell you this I'm da, 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 da. and it's just because they haven't been properly self-expressing all year and so all of a sudden it just comes out in the most uh, obnoxious and ugly ways and you don't want to be one of those people so um september 9th through the through november 13th uh, mars will be um and also because mars represents our ambition and our forward movement and and drive and action that might be a time when we when we might find it more difficult 
to start projects, to initiate new things that require us to project our ambition and drive and all of that kind of stuff. And so um, as you're plotting your 2020, you might want to plan all of your actions that require you, like if you're starting a business or you start a new program or you start whatever, you might want to start before then, you know what I mean? So that you're already into it by the time it goes um, retrograde. And then the last thing I want to say in this segment are the North and South nodes. And um, if you ever get a birth chart from me, one of the things, your sun sign, everybody can find that. But your North and your South node are so important because it it is where your soul, if you will, is trying to ascend in, you know, for over your lifetime. And so like right now, presently that I'm filming this, the, the North node is in the sign of, oh, I wrote that wrong. Um, the North node is in the sign of Cancer, I believe, and the South node is in Capricorn. It's very interesting. It's a very Capricorn kind of year. So like children born right now have a North node in, in, in Cancer. Um, but this year, the nodes change. On May 5th, the North node goes into Gemini, so the South Node goes into Sagittarius. So we will all kind of be working for the next 18 months, starting in May, May 5th, we'll all kind of be working more on our how we self-express and communicate um, in a very fluid and more fast-paced way and leaving behind like delving in so so deeply into everything like everything you don't have to give all of your energy to you know you can just give your energy to to the uh things that actually you know quicker things that that matter like everything doesn't have to be like if you're starting may 5th for example like if you if if something interests you it doesn't have to be the new business that you start and your new spiritual path and everything it can just be an interest you know what i'm saying it can just be a hobby you know it's the time to explore in that kind of way and so yeah that the the nodes change on may 5th north node will be in gemini south node in the sign of sagittarius any questions about this segment Yes. So Mercury and Mars will be in retrograde at the same time during uh -huh. October mm -hmm. in Scorpio, in a way. So should we be precautious with how our anger may cause miscommunication mm -hmm. at the time? And what else? Yeah, how your anger, um, okay, so Mercury is like fast moving, and when it's retrograde, it's telling us to kind of slow down and re not only slow down our physical selves, like don't drive too fast, you know, but also um, slow down and rethink things, like allow ourselves time to think. And so Mars also being retrograde is saying to slow down and don't act so impulsively or aggressively at the same, so that's happening at the same time. So if you're out of alignment with that, guess what? You're gonna talk, to, you're gonna say the wrong thing or you have the potential to say the wrong thing and to act impulsively. So it is during that time we may see people who, because they don't know that this is happening, are just in their feelings and just act impulsively or even start things impulsively. like. Uh, I want to start this business and I want to start it right now. Okay, well, did you, again, remember our overall theme for the year, discipline, order, strategy, structure. So uh, did you create a business plan? Did you think it through? Did you remember how your last business didn't work out so that you can not do what you did last time? No, I just want to do it. You know what I mean? So we want to be mindful of that, especially during that time. with being impulsive and angry mm -hmm. uh, during Mercury and Mars, but we also need to be aware of how we communicate with our loved ones mm -hmm. during Mercury and Venus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Venus definitely deals with your love relationships. A lot of times Venus um, is attributed to, you know, romantic relationships, but uh, it can deal with any of your one-to-one -one relationships, you and another person, you know, just you and whoever it is, your mother, your father, you know, one-to-one. -one. Um 
And also Venus, see, a lot of times Venus does get the reputation of its romantic side and its pleasure for life, pleasure for good food, good wine, beauty, and all the, the things that, you know, people find joy and pleasure in. At the same time, it's, it's um, hmm, this is very interesting. It also is the planet that helps us define beauty and ideals, the beauty in life, you know, because... On one hand, it rules the sign of Taurus, but it also rules the sign of Libra, which is about balance. You think about the scales of balance, the scale that's on justice, that's, you know, um, you see in a courtroom, justice holding the scales and whatnot. So it's about, again, because we said this year, uh, some structures may fall and new structures are being built. So Venus is also asking us, what beauty do we find in the world? to rethink what we thought meant having a beautiful society, having, what does having a beautiful, in my mind, it's like, I'm also picturing like the Statue of Liberty and I also said justice that's in the courtroom. Whenever you read, and I had this assignment for some other students of mine, but whenever you read like, what is it? The um, Declaration of Independence, um, the opening to the U.S. Constitution, all of that kind of stuff. And not just in, in the United States, but globally. Any country, when they start, they always create, they outline their what the theme of their nation will be and what they want the people to, you know. Um, so that's a very kind of, that is Venus, that's very Venus because it's like, what what is the what is an ideal society look like? What does a utopia look like? What do we want our nation, our country, our city, state government, all of that kind of stuff? What what is beautiful about people? So it's not just the beauty in my physical beauty or who I'm in love with and attracted to, though Venus does rule that too, but it's also the, the beauty that you find in the world. So with it going retrograde, especially with all the stuff I already said about Capricorn energy and Saturn and Jupiter and all that kind of stuff, we're also, Venus retrograde might also prompt us all to rethink what does an ideal society look like? Especially with it going retrograde in the sign of Gemini, which is a very social sign. So we have to rethink what does beauty in society look like? Mm -hmm. I'm a Gemini, so I'm a little worried. Oh, no, don't be worried. Don't be worried. That's mean you're going to master that thing. <laughs> Have fun with it. It's just anytime a planet goes retrograde, and like I said, Venus is, is definitely going retrograde in Gemini. But anytime a planet goes retrograde, it's just taking the energy of that planet and pulling it back in and reflecting it on yourself. So Venus, beauty, love, relationships, attraction, all that kind of stuff, just pour it into yourself. Rethink what is beauty to me. The, the things I thought were beautiful, do I really still think that they're beautiful? The things that I was attracted to and the people that I was attracted to, why? Why do I like him? Why do I like her? Why? Do you, what about them lights me up? That's the time to ask those questions. I mean, we should be asking them all along. But Venus retrograde is like, will really make you ask those questions. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I was just more curious about the north and south nodes. How does that affect our personal... For example, my north node is in Aquarius, and my south node is in Leo. Mm -hmm. um, how would the north and south nodes in Gemini and Sagittarius affect me personally? Well, first of all, you say your north node is in Aquarius? Yeah. Um, Gemini and Aquarius are compatible signs. So, I mean, it is kind of working with you. They're both air signs. They're both um, about not having to be tied down to everything physical, not having to be tied down to uh, the way things, the way people say things should go. I mean, I could definitely in a personal reading, I'll go into more detail with that. But since we're all, ex will be experiencing on starting May 5th, um, 
or north node in Gemini, that just means for that that 18 month, 18 month period of time that the north node is in Gemini, we are all looking, um, our aspirations for that 18 month period are more Gemini-like. So we may find ourselves needing to, because the North Node is coming out of Cancer, which is more in its shell, intuitive, emotional, feeling, very feeling within itself. Then we bust out with the North Node in Gemini for 18 months. So now it's a time where we may find ourselves being more social, um, meeting new people who are not like us and being open to it, um, communicating more. Or we may find that the doors that we want open to us are going to require that we come out of our shells and have open communication with people and talk more and stuff like that. So we'll all be feeling that for 18 months. Now, any children born starting May 5th and over the next 18 months after that, their entire lives, their North Node, will that's, that will be their life's goals, one of their life's goals, one of the, you know, but for those, like, that's not my North Node. So I will just be feeling that for the next, you know, 18 months. You know, anybody, you know, all of us. Yeah. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right. All right, y'all. So um, I'm going to pull some Oracle cards and then we'll have some more questions and then that will be it. So we already know this year, um, the theme of the year is really about uh, creating structures, finding discipline, um, and understanding that discipline is what creates the structures and the healthy boundaries that create the outcomes and the prosperity and things that we say that we want. This is a great, this actually is, you know, it's, it's interesting to me that so many people are like, I'm not creating New Year's resolutions when this is actually the year to create resolutions because it's so Capricorn heavy that, um, and Capricorn is about being resolved. Oh, shameless plug. Make sure, again, you click the link that is here because um, my masterclass, Resolution Power, will open up in about 10 days or so. Um, and it is about creating resolutions that actually manifest. Most people create wishes. And resolutions aren't wishes um, at all. So um, in Resolution, Resolution Power, I will show you how to create real, actual resolutions uh, that manifest. I've done it time and time again in my own life, so I know the formula. Don't mean I always adhere to the formula, because sometimes I get off, as we all do, but um, yeah. So anyway, um, right now, shuffling, what do we most need to know, do, and be aware of in 2020? Actually, question, what do we need to leave behind in 2019? What do we all collectively need to leave behind in 2019? Mm. First card up, the devil. The devil, boys and girls. All right, so I pulled three cards. Um, the Devil came out first, the Six of Cups. And the Three of Cups. Ooh, all right, so this makes perfect sense. And it's very interesting that Capricorn also on its lower energy is symbol is the devil or the goat. So it's <laughs> very interesting to leave this behind in 2019. Leave behind, um, the devil represents, in tarot, just represents anything that you feel you can't live without that you know you can. Um, the, the devil card, let me see if I can find it in my other deck because I like the way it, I also like the way it looks in, um, in this deck because the people on the card are chained. You see these chains around their neck, but the chains are loose. Like they get, at any given moment, they can come out of the chains. They just choose not to. 
The devil represents all of the things that you think are holding you back, your habits. What do we say? No external, external forces are responsible for our behavior. All of the habits that, or, or excuses. I can't stop. I can't let this go. It's, it's all of the things, even addiction. So even if you have like an alcohol addiction, a drug addiction, like the devil card represents your addictions, your addictive behaviors, your excuses, all of the things, even relationships that have been holding you hostage that you think you can't let go of, but you have the power to overthrow the devil at any given point. You have the, whatever the devil is in your life. You have the, the, the power to let go of anything that's holding you bound. And you know it because you feel bound. You feel like, you feel like I want to break free from this, but I can't. I want to, but I can't. And it's like that, it's like a craving that you know you shouldn't you shouldn't even feed, but for whatever reason you keep feeding it. This could be anything, because there's a bunch of people watching. So this could be anything. Uh, it could be relationships, drugs. It could even be money, because some people are addicted to money. Like we all want money, but some people are like, you know, will do anything for money. The things you that you will even compromise yourself for. You really need to leave that back in 2019. Anything that you will compromise your integrity for, your dignity, the thing that you do that when you're done doing it, you can't even look yourself in the mirror or you can't look your friends in the face who know you did it because you know, dang, I can't even show my face. I can't even show my face because I know they're going to be like, why you do that again? Whatever that is for you, you need to let go of it. You need to, that needs to stay back in 2019. Again, with this devil card, the devil, uh, the symbol of the devil or the goat, oftentimes um, being connected to Capricorn. Why? Because Capricorn energy, like I said before, is all about rules. It's all about being obedient. It's all about structure. The devil is the opposite of that. It's like, oh, forget the rules. Do what you want. But then you always suffer the consequences. You always suffer the consequences. So why not let that go? It is followed by the Six of Cups. And uh, this is this might be backwards for y'all. I don't even know. But it was followed by the Six of Cups and then the Three of Cups. So this is really telling me whatever. The Six of Cups is usually like your childhood or your comfort zone or your little happy place and all that kind of stuff. But why is this coming up in what we need to leave behind? Because we need to leave behind our comfort zone. Sometimes the comfort zone is your own devil because... It's like reflecting on your childhood or reflecting on your good old days or reflecting on what made you feel good and comfortable. But in the long term, it never propels you forward. It never was this year about being a leader. So it's never causing you to rise to be the master of yourself and to be a leader because you still want to be a child or you still want to do things how you used to do them or you still want to stay in your comfort zone gotta let that go and then the three of cups <laughs> what's the saying two's a party but three's a crowd so some folk watching might be in these little love triangles please let that go if you in a love triangle if you with the third wheel or maybe you were the first or the second wheel and there's a third one involved and you know it why you keep going back i mean i don't i don't get it Okay, I'm yelling at y'all, but I'm a person too, so I get it. I'm let me calm down. I'm bring I'm here. I'm bringing it here. I understand. We all got things that we can't let go of, or we think we can't let go of, because the devil makes you think you can't let go of what you have the power to actually let go of and release. And some folk dealing with this three of cups is because. You know, all of these cards have a higher and lower energy, but because I'm looking at what we need to release, I'm going to talk about this lower energy. So it usually is when it's love relationships and there's too many people involved or friendships that, what are they, frenemies? You know, where it's like they're your friend, but they're really not, and y'all both don't like each other, but y'all still friends. Let, how are you going, Did what I keep saying this year is all about discipline order and structure and being rewarded for discipline order and structure and being rewarded for being the leader and the master of yourself how you gonna do that with you still dealing with this shit low level why no let it go all right so we know what we need to let go of okay up next we know what we need to let go of 
Now, 2019 wasn't all bad, right? So now I wanna know <laughs> what from 2019 do we all need to take into 2020? We know what we need to let go of, but now I wanna know, we wanna know what from 2019 is useful to us. What lessons or anything from 2019 did collectively we all need to take with us into 2020? One second. What do we need to take with us into 2020 from 2019? Okay. Thank you. All right, so we know what we need to release. Now, what do we need to take from 2019 into 2020? We've got the Ace of Cups. We have the King of Pentacles. And we have the Two of Swords. So, the Ace of Cups. <laughs> Whatever you went through in 2019 that was traumatic, hard, you know, whatever took you through, because the cups represent emotions, whatever took you through emotional changes, hopefully you came out, out of that with lessons and a clear knowing of what you now want. The Ace of Cups is like when the divine is giving you a new opportunity of renewed love, renewed self-love. Yep, shameless promotion. Get my book, The Magic of Self-Love. Because but love begins inwardly before you can manifest it proper love outwardly, or at least even if it comes to you outwardly, if you don't have self-love, you can't even really receive it. So the Ace of Cups is like, um, the I feel that what, what we need to take from 2019 into 2020 is whatever you discovered about yourself, whatever you discovered that you truly love about yourself and what you deserve for yourself, that's the insight that you need to take in 2020 and don't compromise on that because now you know now you know what love should feel like what love should look like you know what it don't look like now you know but now you know what it should feel like and you should be working on even cultivating that within yourself and the ace of cups is also creativity like this spark of um overflowing look at that water is flowing overflowing creativity you know, um, and ideas. Like really, I'm really seeing some of y'all like really pouring that love into yourself and believing in yourself. Like any failures you had in 2019, it was only to show you what you could do better and, and to show you what is for you and what's not for you. Um, and so now it's like an overwhelming, now you know what you can do or how you can do things better. So, and renewed energy in that. Focus on that, not on what went wrong, not what, what you lost, what failed. Think about what you learned even through what seemed to fail. Um, King of Pentacles. <laughs> sometimes in love re reading, sometimes it shows up when like a man or a woman, whatever is coming into your life with some money. But overall, since I'm speaking to everybody, not just one person in particular, um, this is like being more, whatever you, even money mistakes that you made from 2019, you learn from them. Now be the king of pentacles is the master of his money. So be the master of your money, not only your, your money, but your resources, things that you have, food. It, it, the pentacles represent anything physical, right? So food, land, money, you know, hair products, whatever it is that you got, <laughs> lip glosses. I'm saying like, you know, all your resources, manage them properly. You, you learn, you know what it looks like to not manage them properly. But now, you know, the King of Pen Pentacles is empowering you like, okay, this could be a really good money year for you. If you manage your money properly, if you manage your resources properly, again, Capricorn this year, you know, it's gonna reward. It's gonna reward us for our discipline and our structure that we put in place. That's where the rewards come from. And then also, what we're carrying into 2020, this Two of Swords. The Two of Swords. 
sometimes represents when choices have to be made, right? And so many of us leaving 2019 into 2020, we know what we have to do. And so the two of swords is like, okay, the swords represent mental energy and clarity. So now make a sharp choice, make a clear decision, learn, or even better, some of you maybe didn't know how to weigh properly weigh your pros and cons. So now you know how to do that. Learn, weigh your pros and cons with every choice that you have to make, make conscious and aware decisions. What you learn, basically what I'm saying is this decision-making skills. Take your decision-making skills into 2020. So now we know what we got to let go and we know what we need to take with us into 2020. Okay, so now I'm going to ask, how can we best overall, collectively, everybody, how can we prepare for this 2020? Now that we know all the astrology and the overall theme, how can we, um, all of us watching now or the replay, how can we best stay aligned for our highest benefit and good? Or how can we best prepare for this particular 2020? What do we most need to know and do we be aware of in order to properly prepare for 2020? Judgment. The sun. And the star. So how can we best prepare to stay in alignment with, <clears throat> you know, what we know this 2020 is looking like? We, these are all major arcana cards. Oh my God, I just realized that. Wow. All right. How do you get best prepared? Judgment is all about really judging yourself. And when I say judging, it means rightly looking at yourself. Okay. Knowing who you are, the skills that you have, the talents that you have, the gifts that you have, what you know, whatever, and pulling all of that that lies dormant within you to the surface. So if you were playing it small in 2019, if you were playing below your intellect level, below your potential level, below your skill level, the judgment card is calling you into judgment in a good way to say, okay, let's pull all of that stuff, all of your best potential that's lying deep down within you that seems dormant, let's pull it to the surface so that we can actually utilize it. So if you know that you have skills and talents that, you know, you're like, ah, oh, I was going to do this, I was gonna, but I don't know if I can't. This is really like, okay, this is the time to believe in all of you, every all everything that's in you, and pull all of that to the surface. Um, and walk in joy. The sun is like pure joy and confidence. That's how you that's how you prepare for this 2020. Again, is this all about us all becoming the leaders that we know that we can? We have to step into leadership positions. Um, and it doesn't mean you're some big global leader, just whatever, whatever. Stop giving your power away. So the sun is like, remember your your own power. When you think about the sun, when you look up in the sky and you see the sun, that sun is powerful and hot. We are what, 93 million miles away or whatever from the sun, and yet on the hottest day, it is hot as hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how powerful the sun is. That's how powerful your confidence has to be. That's how confident you have to shine or at least prepare yourself to shine in that way. Stand firmly and stand confidently in the knowledge of who you are. And the star um, really deals with renewal and healing and refreshing yourself. Take time out uh, make sure that you are taking time out to uh, self-reflect and to heal. heal. Anything from 2019 or before that you're still dealing with, 
Be patient with yourself. Be kind to yourself and allow yourself to continue to heal from whatever it is that you need to heal and grow from. And give yourself some time. January in particular, you, this might be a time as you, we're all strategizing and goal setting and all that kind of stuff to also um, not beat ourselves up so much for what didn't go well but to allow ourselves to kind of heal from whatever and to give ourselves some time for self-care. Self-care is very important. So self-care your emotions to, you know, just take your time, chill sometime, all right? So that's how we prepare. And then I have one last question. One last question. Overall, with everything that we know that I shared astrologically and the overall theme of the year, what do we most need to know and do and be aware of for 2020? So that we can end 2020 in December on the highest and best note for ourselves. What do we all most need to know, do and be aware of for 2020? so that we can end the year on a high note, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Hmm. We have the world. The world. Which is very interesting. It's the last card in the tarot deck. So I was asking how to end the year we got the world. The Knight of Wands. And the Moon. Mm. So we got the Sun, the Moon, and Star. Wow, we all cosmic, ain't we? <laughs> so the world, remember I'm asking, you know, what do we all collectively need to know, do, and be aware of so that come December 2020, we can, um, how can we best position ourselves to end the year on a high note and a prosperous note? And the world really is, it's the last card of the deck. The world is the card of, of completion, of glorious graduation, whatever it is. So... It's after you have done all of the work, after you planted all of the seeds you need to plant, after you've set the goals and you've done the work. Look at her. She's sitting on top of the world. You know, she is sitting on top of the world with her butterfly wings. It's really what I say in just previously with the sun, like bursting out in full confidence. You know, how, to, how the caterpillar becomes the butterfly, you know, and sitting on top of the world. So that is definitely the potential for all of us if we do the work. And the Knight of Wands um, really is about... All of the wands are about ambition and drive and doing the work and all of that kind of stuff. And so the Knight of Wands... This might be because it's not the king of wands. The knight of wands is, is a little less experienced than the king of wands. The knight of wands is very much, is kind of impulsive, does um, take action. So as we're plotting and strategizing and whatnot, you, we sit on top of the world when we take, I would say, um, conscious action towards our goals. When we're unafraid, the knight of wands is not afraid. He's unafraid. He now, you know, we already got the judgment card that came out. So we already know our innermost potential that we're bringing to the surface. So now the Knight of Wands is saying, don't be afraid. When you know something is for you, take action towards it. Go for it. You know, go for it. And it's so interesting that it was followed by the moon because the moon lets me know that some of us might still be afraid. The moon deals with your subconscious mind your innermost fears, um, and all of the things that's running on the subconscious mind. So this, um, we will have to face our innermost fears. We'll have to face ourselves. We'll have to face whatever's running on the subconscious mind so that we can get onto the top of the world. This will be a good year. And I said this recently. I don't know if it's in today's pick a card reading. Or was it in the Capricorn video? I can't even remember because I've been talking a lot lately in front of the camera. But um, I talked about, you know, programming. Oh, I know who it was for. 
for all the sun sign Aquarius out there, if you watch, everybody's a Capricorn, including you. When I got to the Aquarius segment, I told all the Aquarians to really work on their subconscious mind. But anyway, all of us this year, this will be a good year to whatever programming work you got to do on the subconscious to get rid of those even beliefs that were passed down to us from family. Even beliefs, traditions that this is what family looks like. This is what, you know, sometimes we adopt the beliefs and the patterns and the behaviors of our people, our parents and grandparents and people who have come before us and influenced us. And we don't even realize that those patterns are still our default setting. We're still functioning on that level. And so the moon is saying, hey, you're going to have to, we already got the sun and the star. The sun is shining its light on the moon and say, hey, we're going to have to deal with those things that's running on your on the subconscious uh, level, whether they be fears or whatnot. But the good thing about the moon and the subconscious mind is when you program your subcon subconscious mind right, then your default is always towards success. Your default is always towards self-love. Your default is always towards your highest good. So it's about getting into your subconscious mind and programming yourself making new habits basically your subconscious mind ain't nothing but unseen habits you know how you habitually think how you habitually think are you somebody who is habitually you know something ready to jump off at any given moment whatever your habitual behavior patterns are face them and deal with them and whatever ones need to change change them that's how you sit on top of the world so lastly i will pull I only want to pull one card, a uh, wisdom card um, for additional wisdom and guidance uh, for 2020. And this will be the last card and then we will um, wrap up. But what additional wisdom is there for us in 2020? What do we all most need to know, do and be aware of in the year 2020 for our highest and best good? What additional wisdom and guidance is there for two cards I might have to clarify this last one it came out so the first one um, that came out is a card called deep knowing deep knowing my audience is so quiet <laughs> All right, so deep knowing says, <clears throat> intuition, okay, listening to the oracle within, empathy, hypersensitivity. Intuition is the faculty that allows you to enter into a dialogue with source, the consciousness that you are a part of but cannot see with the naked eye. It's perplexing that people are taught to ignore this natural capacity to navigate their journeys, to access their inner guidance. Know that you have an ability to read between the lines and find all the truth that, is miss that was missing when the story was told. This deep knowing allows you, open allows you to open the door to wisdom far greater than what is available in the limitations of human experience. You're given information that may make no sense whatsoever to the logical mind or five senses, but which is 100% correct and true. The trick is to listen and then act accordingly. You're now invited into this sacred dialogue of deep knowing. So tune in and trust your vibes. They will be right. Ask and you will receive answers from unusual sources. The relationship message says, there are occasions when you just know deep in your heart and soul that a person is going to play a meaningful role in your life. Someone crosses your path and suddenly, <laughs> Out of the blue, you're connected at a level impossible to describe. The, that feeling marks a moment in time etched indelibly onto your soul. Someone has entered your life who will play, who will be instrumental in your journey. So pay attention. Two hearts are calling to each other to begin an alchemical process. This is also a sign that your intuition about the person you care about is correct. Trust your heart to lead you now. Magic is about to happen. The prosperity message says, 
This is a time when your hunches will pay large dividends. If you listen to them, take the risk and act. I tell y'all on this rain. <sighs> Within you, there's an or oracular, auricular, auricular. I can read y'all. Consciousness, a higher and deeper knowing that transcends the machinations of the smaller thinking mind. <laughs> At the deep level of your intuitive senses, you have an access point to the genius of the collective, the energies of all thinkers and creators, all inventors and leaders, and all that you need in order to leap into success are available to tune into. This is an act of listening intently past the busy mind your genius awaits. Basically, if I had to sum up deep knowing, intuition. You already know what's right. You already know what you should be doing. You already know, like the devil card, you already know what you should be letting go. The love that you want comes when you let go of what you're holding on to. The success and financial prosperity comes when you're able to let go of those things, but when you trust yourself. If you don't trust yourself and your intuition, it's going to be very hard. Um, and because then you will just be looking at everything that's happening in the outside world and you won't be able to do what this said, which is read between the lines. Trust your intuition. Don't always just trust what you hear, but trust spirit that's within you speaking to you, okay? And then the second card, a change in the wind. <laughs> Again, this came up last week for a different reading. Um, and I see, I'm not going to pull another card because I see how these two are working together. I'm not going to pull... I'm not going to pull another one of these, but the goddesses want to speak, I feel, so I do have to pull one of those. But I'm not going to clarify this because I already know what the clarity is and I'm about to tell you. But a change in the wind says a sense that unseen change has been initiated. Preparation for a storm. Awareness that your plans are not on firm ground. Feeling a shift. Uncertainty about which direction the winds will blow. It's human nature to yearn for certainty and resist change, to want the world to remain co consistent like a zebra's stripes, yet nothing in human experience is black or white, nor will anything remain static. The one thing guaranteed is change. Now's the time of transformation as outer conditions are temporarily moving out of sync with your desires and expectations. Stay the course and remember that even storms serve to clear the air, scatter seeds, and nourish the soil for better things ahead. Life is about to get interesting. Anticipate it with curiosity as you wonder what is coming in on the shifting winds. The unknown is where the magic lies. The relationship message says, relationships go through periods where partners seem out out of sync with each other. The stormy emotions and moods threaten to take down the ship. Perhaps someone has changed, has a change of heart and leaves. These rough seas offer opportunities for mutual growth, a way for you to understand your own heart better and to know what you need to be truly happy. Rest assured that whatever is happening now, good will come from it. Take temporary shelter and remove yourself from drama. The air will clear and everything will be fresh and new again. This too shall pass. The prosperity message says, as you endeavor to create a prosperous life, you may encounter unexpected reversals that cause you to shift directions. This is a good thing, so there is nothing to fear. Perhaps an opportunity you sought went to someone else. Perhaps you pursued something that you suddenly realize is not in your highest good. You might not be 100% clear on where you need to go, but you are certain that things are not going as planned. Circumstances are not in your control right now. Wait it out. All will be well, even better actually. Trust. So how these two are working together? There are changes happening. And again, we already see it happening in the world. There are changes you know, uh, there are changes, change is inevitable. Change is the only constant. Change is the only thing that we know for certain will always happen. And so when change happens, what do we have to use? Our deep knowing, our intuition, you know, because if you're only looking at how things are changing, shifting, and, and you'll just get confused and caught up in the chaos and wonder, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do. And you get caught up in that. So that's why you have to trust your intuition this year. Yes, follow the rules. Yes, be disciplined. Yes, stick to your blueprint, whatever you lay out for yourself. But then trust that there's 
uh, higher, your higher self, your ancestors, your God, however you define it, trust spirit when it speaks to you. Because if you don't, you'll only be looking at the things that don't go right or the setbacks and be so discouraged that you just like, I, I give up. When really because, and what I'm feeling is really because sometimes setbacks happen and stagnation happens to show you what you're made of, number one. Number two, because there might be other people in line to try to get what's, what is for you. So as soon as a setback happens, those people will go away anyway because it's a setback, you know. But if you stay the course and you trust your intuition, then you will be the one set up to win. For real, y'all. Last card. I'm only doing this because I just felt like one of these goddesses wanted to say something. So I'm about to pull from my goddess energy deck. Um, and the goddesses, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. Goddesses speak to us all. Whether you are, whether you believe the goddesses actually existed in physical form, it doesn't matter. It's their stories and their mythology that teach us the lessons that we need to know. So which goddess wants to speak up to us now as far as what we all most need to know, do, and be aware of in 2020? What wisdom and guidance is there for us uh, in 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. <laughs> okay. 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 feel about pronouncing the goddesses names properly because like all women we want to maybe you can help me benzai uh 10 i think it's pronounced she's um i think she's a japanese goddess um but beauty and what i say earlier about venus going retrograde mm -hmm. this year inner beauty. inner beauty yep so let me read the information i will read two messages from her her empowerment message and her alignment message. The empowerment message is how, obviously how we can stay empowered. And then the alignment message is just in case we find ourselves out of alignment with her, um, how to get back into alignment. And so Japanese, I was correct. Um, it says, you are at your most lovely when you are being yourself. The Japanese goddess of beauty, Benzai Ten, reminds you that knowing, accepting, and honoring yourself as a spiritual being in a physical body requires self-care. Didn't I just say something about self-care? Mm -hmm. Now is the time to support yourself by supporting, by surrounding yourself with beauty and choosing to see its power in every aspect of your life. If you can commit to doing that, you will be amazed at how much more beauty arises to greet you. Open your eyes to the wonder everywhere. Even in the most unexpected places, beauty waits to be discovered. Consider this before you turn away from a person, place, or thing. Beauty is everywhere. It's your time to find it, and the goddess Benzai Ten will help you. Her alignment message says, your ability to see beauty in your world is dimmed by a momentary lapse in self-worth. The goddess of beauty asks you whether you've been set back by a visit of perfectionism or others have withheld their support, causing you to feel small and insignificant. Whatever the circumstances, it appears that you have been hijacked by a sense of lack. Your alignment task is to restore your self-worth and regain your e equilibrium by refusing to engage in these mind games designed to dim your light. Now is the time for a positive self-inventory. The goddess Benzai Ten is here to remind you that you are a bright, shiny, beautiful being of divine power and light. You are more than enough, and the world contains more than enough beauty for you. This is a good place to dust off and start again. So how this is falling in alignment with what uh, these other cards that I just read here is that, you know, if any time during this year, you know, you get caught up in the chaos and the confusion, you're looking around you and whatever's going on in the world around you, or you, you know, you just having a hard time sticking the course or things, disappointment, go back into your intuition, 
and your intuitive self to guide you. And then the wisdom that I just read from Ben Zaitin is that instead of focusing on what's not working, if you should stumble upon setbacks this year or whatever, instead of being frustrated by that, find the beauty in the world around you. There's always something around you that is going well, that's going right, even if it's within yourself. You know, and if you have any setbacks, don't um, beat yourself up about it or feel or lower your self-worth or whatever. This She's reminding you that you're worthy of the absolute most divine best in your life at all times. So when you stay in tune to that energy, then you will walk consistently no matter what is going on around you and i don't know why i keep thinking about that um if in the book of psalms psalm 91 where it says something like 10 may fall at my right side 100 on my left whatever but god is with me or something like that like like no matter what your whatever destructive whatever might be happening around you or failures or setback it's like it can't touch you when you stay in this place when you stay in a place of beauty you'll see it you'll look with your eyes you'll be like dang that's messed up what's happening over there dang that's messed up what's happening to her but it won't come near you because you're staying in a place of deep intuition deep knowing Staying connected to spirit and always seeing the beauty that's around you. And whatever you give your attention to is what flows back to you. So you might as well keep your eye on that, which is beautiful. And even go back and listen to what I said about Mercury going retrograde. And not only just the beauty of your outward self, but the beauty of ideals, the beauty of what is in the world and in the community. Everything isn't all bad. And if you watch the news, you'll think everything is all bad. There's a lot of good in the world. So you have to stay focused on that. All right, so I'm done. And I just got a notification that I got, I'm on low battery power mode. So I'm glad I'm done. But do we have any, uh, any questions from the audience? No rush. I mean, it'll just shut down when it's done. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you any questions that you might have or thoughts, even thoughts, they don't have to be a question. Did I? I don't even know what time. Good. Luck. Oh yeah, I see the time. Sorry, y'all. Whatever. Y'all gonna thank me when y'all go back and watch it. Thank you. Thank you. And make sure y'all. Thank you. Make sure y'all watch this throughout the year because you're hearing this now. You're like, ooh. And then when all the other stuff start happening, you're going to be like, oh. And then you come back and listen. You're like, oh. You know what I'm saying? This is the reading of the year. So I don't care if it's May, June. I don't care when you see this video. You come back and watch it over and over again throughout the year. Um, so while if they're thinking about any questions, I want to again give a special thanks to Inigo's Cultural Arts Centers for um, allowing me to do this in their space. Um, we have a Rites of Passage program coming out that's not on the link that I have here, but maybe I'll put it there so that y'all can see it. But definitely click the link that I have on this um, video here because depending on when you're watching this, y'all might be watching this later on in the year, but if you're watching this in January, I'm about to open Resolution Power to help us to help... Help us all to create resolutions that actually manifest. If you keep making wishes, those are not resolutions and they won't happen. So let me show you how to make resolutions that actually manifest. Um, every Sunday, I post the reading for the week, the pick a card reading for the week. Those of you who are watching right now, I already posted the little one minute intro so you can start selecting your cards. But um, every Sunday, I do the pick a card reading for the week. And then when you comment your card selection um, by Monday, you're in the running to win my monthly giveaway. So uh, make sure you do that book, A Personal Reading With Me. That is on that link that is here. Get the Magic of Self-Love available on Amazon. And I really think that's it. I think I don't have anything else to say. Anybody else? I've been talking a lot, I feel. Well, I would like to say that I think it's cool that what you were saying is actually very relatable because all that we have been talking about lately is what we've been seeing on the news mm -hmm. and a lot of signs that the world, like I know me and my group of friends are like, the world's about to end. <laughs> so it's so bad, we're going down, everything is just become a bunch of chaos. So I think it's cool that it's showing that, it, it, yes, it might be destruction, but there's an aftermath afterwards mm -hmm. that can be positive. And this year also, we're voting. So it's like- Oh yeah. 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 We are trusting ourselves to make a higher decision that will affect the world ultimately. Mm -hmm. So I think that's everything that you were saying is like, 
That's good. And if you think about it, every time that there, every time everybody thought the world was going to end, this is it, or it's so much destruction, it, it always a bounce back, always a bounce back from that. Really, and um, it really is just a time of shifting, change. Ch that's what it's. That's what it's all about. That's what everything is all about. I'm gonna be doing a workshop in February. I think it's February 15th called The Power of the Black Vote. Um, and uh, because this is a this is a voting year and when we think even about the, um, was it the 15th Amendment and then the Civil Rights Act that really dealt with our voting power and all of that kind of stuff is very important that we are aware of those kinds of things. So I have some community organizer people who will actually be teaching that. Well. I whatever I I don't it's too early to say exactly but I somebody actually approached me about doing something similar to that and then I said yeah it's um it's time for me to start doing the those kinds of events too so anyway um so I will invite you all to that I'll let you know when that is taking place uh, well it is scheduled on February 15th but I will let you know more details as we get them but yeah, again, we are the ones, and, and if we keep giving our energy to destruction, then we we got to give our energy to, well, what do we want to be structured? What do we want to be there? So if change is happening, other than, rather than just giving all of your energy to the change that's happening and what's, you know, then give your energy to um, the change that you want to see. That's important. I would say it was nice to, that, the goddess card spoke to you because it was to me it just felt like she was saying no matter what's happening no matter how challenging this year and this decade may be because i feel like this also reflects the next decade mm -hmm. always keep your solar plexus bright always oh, yeah. look at the light and beauty within yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um because so, you know going through the current world we in we do forget about that because there's so much darkness right now but there's so much light within us all. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, in all the solar uh, celestial body, the sun, moon, and stars came out in this reading. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like keep your light alive. Keep looking at the beauty in the world. And even like I was telling you earlier, like when a farmer is, is planting their farm and um, is, you know, everybody likes to look at a farmer, all the fruits and flowers and everything is coming up and it's all beautiful and stuff. But when they're tilling the soil and pulling weeds, it's kind of destructive. Mm -hmm. They're destructive. You know, it's a destructive process in order to put the seed in the ground for what you want. But then once it comes up, it's like, oh, it's so beautiful. Cause I, again, I was responsible and did the work and planted my seeds. You know what I mean? And, and so again, this year where you got to do the work to see the beauty, <laughs> the alchemist, keep your eye on the beauty. Uh, that you want to see but even while you're planting the seeds when nothing looks when the outcomes aren't there yet that you want keep your visual mind alive and strong because that's what's going to i never forget you remember when i had like um tomatoes and green beans and stuff growing mm -hmm. in the backyard and i'd be like i gotta get home i gotta water my plants i was acting like i'm a real farmer you know what i mean <laughs> but i just had like a few and i was all excited and i'll go out there and look at the little seedlings growing up no there weren't any tomatoes on the vine yet but i was in my brain i had a whole garden of tomatoes you couldn't tell me nothing <laughs> That's how we got to be, continuing to see the beauty in the world at all times. We got to see the beauty and the, the outcomes that we want even before they come. That's how you manifest what you want. Ashe. Ashe. Ashe all day. All right, y'all. So that is it for the reading of the year for 2020. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you click the link and get... Just click everything. When you click that link, just click everything. I even got a donation button down there. If this reading has benefited you in any kind of way and you want to give a love offering, when you click the link, scroll all the way down, take you to PayPal and Cash App, you can leave me a love offering. No offering is too small or too big. It's all about the law of reciprocity. So I appreciate that. All right. So that is it. This video will be up on YouTube in like a day or two. All right.